thinking about that vastness of space, do you think we'll ever be able to cross it as people? I mean, is, is, is inter, interstellar space travel in our future, do you think? Well, getting into outer space is quite difficult, first of all. People don't realize how expensive it is. If I take this, which weighs about a pound, and put it into orbit around the Earth, it costs about $10,000 to do that. That's your weight in gold. Think of your body made out of solid gold. That's what it costs to put you just in orbit around the Earth. To put you on the moon costs about $100,000 a pound. To put you on Mars is about a million dollars a pound. I'm just going to change this for the, the Australian audience. That's like $2.2 million per kilo. $2.2 million a kilo. Yeah. That's your weight in diamonds. <laughs> okay? That's what it costs to put you on Mars. So you begin to realize how expensive outer space is, and then how distant the planets are, and the stars. The Saturn rocket, the rocket that took us to the moon, the Saturn rocket would have to operate for 100,000 years to reach Alpha Centauri, the nearest star. 100,000 years. We need a new method of space travel other than chemical rockets. So I think that in 100 years' time, we may have fusion rockets. Uh, these are called ramjet fusion rockets. They look like an ice cream cone. They scoop up hydrogen in the forward direction, fuse it in the back, so we have an infinite supply of fuel, hydrogen gas from outer space, energizing a fusion machine. That may take us to the stars in perhaps just a few hundred years. So we need something different, maybe antimatter engines, um, something different to get us closer to the stars rather than waiting 100 years. Now, you've, you've thought about ways of perhaps changing the, the, the sort of physical embodiment of us if we're to do this, because obviously, if it's going to take hundreds of years, I mean, our regular bodies just wouldn't seem to work over that, that time. Right. Yeah. In my book, The Future of the Mind, which, by the way, uh, last, uh, last month, it hit number one on the New York Times bestseller list. Congratulations. Yeah. Congratulations. <laughs> and they, they used to think that books about science wouldn't sell. Is that right? Right. They used to say the word physics would never enter the New York Times bestseller list. And now you've had two of them, just you. I did it twice. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, the, the point is, though, that in the future, we will have a disk called the connectome. We, right now, we will have a disk called the genome. That costs about $1,000. That is all genes, all the genes of your body on one disk. I've had my genes sequenced, most of them, by BBC television. In the future, we will have a second disk, and that disk is the connectome with all the memories, all the neural pathways of the human brain. And we will put this connectome on a laser beam, and we will send it into outer space. And the connectome contains all your memories, your personality, everything about you will be contained on the connectome. And to go to the moon will take about one second. We can shoot your consciousness to the moon in one second. To go to Mars will take about 20 minutes. 20 minutes to go to Mars, not, not thousands of years. And to hit Alpha Centauri, four years. Four years, you will visit another celestial body. So I think this is the neatest way to explore outer space. Forget booster rockets, forget, uh, forget accidents, forget weightlessness, forget radiation. Light beams is the way to go. And maybe aliens in outer space have already done it. Maybe there's already an intergalactic space lanes of laser beams shooting consciousness throughout the galaxy, and we are too stupid to know it. <laughs>